With that, if you all would unmute and we do a very warm welcome and round of applause for our little Bighorn College team. We are so excited to be with you today. Again, I encourage you to have your cameras on if you're comfortable. With that, I don't want to take any more time. I want to pass it over to Elda Goodluck, who is our amazing site host and is going to have her team jump in and help us today. Elda, it's all yours. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, we're going to start right away with Perrin, uh, Sharon Paraguay, the education uh, instructor, and she's also the coordinator for the two plus two. So uh, Sharon, if you want to give a prayer to start off. All right. Um, if you want to stand, you can. If not, I'll just go ahead and stand. Uh, go ahead and pray with me right now. I'll be uh, speaking in pro. Bahlakos <laughs> Oh, thank you. We invited. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we invited uh, Dr. Dave P. Garlett, our, our Little Bitcoin College president, to say uh, the welcoming address. Um, so I'm hoping he's on right now. Elda, I don't see him in the in the okay. yet, but we could always come back and I'll let you know. Okay, let's do that in. then. Great. Um, uh, Emerson Bolchi, the Dean of Academics. Uh, yes. Dr. Bolchi, would you like to say a few words about the um, our program? You see him on there? I'm on here either. Okay. Right. I've seen him go to the cafeteria. Yeah. So okay. we maybe we can swing by. Where did Sharon go? Let her let's let her talk about her very successful program she has. There. Sure. Sharon? Did she Would go? you like to <laughs> oh did she go to? <laughs> it's finals week right here, so everybody's kind of on a tight schedule. But um, so Patricia, do you just want to go ahead and do start? Sure. Um, okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Patricia Whiteman. I'm Dean of Students here at Little Bitcoin College. And um, yes, it is lunchtime. It is finals. Um, we always have a lot going on at Little Bitcoin College. So we're all kind of going in different directions. Um, right now, we're getting ready for graduation. Um, but it's a busy time and Sharon has a really good teachers program we have going on here. Um, a little oversight of the college, it was started in um, about 1981. And um, like, I don't know if you know, we're all located on the Crow Indian Reservation. Um, I worked in the college for a while at different capacities, um, helping students one on one and now I'm an administrator, but I have a really good team. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it on to Will, um, William Bill Okro, so he can tell a little bit more about our registration process and um, then we could probably go into admissions and wait for Dr. Yarlett or Emerson to get back on. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is William Old Crow. I'm the registrar here at Little Bighorn College. I've been in this position for six years now with the college since 1993 in different capacities. And I left for about 10 years, but I've been here for about 18, 19 years now. 
But um, I just wanted to talk a few about the, the um, degrees that we offer. We offer five uh, associate of arts degrees. We offer five um, associates of science degrees. Uh, we have uh, one AASS, uh, and then we offer um, eight um, one-year certificates. And what I do is um, basically what a registrar does is um, register students, um, keep their files, um, update it, their grades, enter grades. Um, I also um, help with uh, Ames ACUS report, the IPEDS report, the Montana um, non-beneficiary report. Um, there's a few others that I can't think of right now, but um, but yeah, um, I don't really have that much to say because it's lunchtime and I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> So I'm just gonna swing it back to Patricia. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, lunchtime is a busy time for us, but we'll go ahead and go on because I see we have Tiana on. on. So Tiana, do you wanna talk about what you do with uh, Nathaniel and Rafina in your program and your newly added building trades? Yeah, so my name is Tiana Brain. I'm the WIOA Youth Coordinator. And I work with Bertina Nomi and Nathaniel Deputy, who Nathaniel's here and Bertina's getting logged on, but in the we so I'll talk about the youth program in the youth program sense. this year. My blood pressure's gonna go up. Um <laughs> it's going to start in June. And this year we're kind of taking a new route and adding cultural activities in. So everybody's <laughs> participating and helping with ideas and it's going pretty good. But in our department, we have the building traits. If you want to talk about that, if you do, you know. Um, the youth program. Oh yeah, thank you. Okay. I couldn't get on on my she computer. She can't get on, so <laughs> she's gonna jump on my computer. This is Bertina. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Christina Nomi, and I'm the workforce navigator here at Little Bighorn College, and I oversee the WIOA program and the workforce uh, development programs here, uh, which consists of the highway construction and the building trades. We have, um, in the building trades, we have uh, carpentry, HVAC, plumbing, and electrical, and we have an MOU with MSU Northern where the students would take their electrical <laughs> and plumbing courses there, and the carpentry courses here. Right now, our students are um, renovating Plenty Doors building in for their bathrooms and um, putting up walls for offices. I believe there's like five offices. So that's their hands-on training. And they'll be doing some more this summer. And I will pass it on to Nathaniel. Yeah. 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 How do I start video? Yeah. Hello, my name is Nathaniel. Hi. <laughs> I'm an instructor here for the highway construction program. It consists of heavy equipment and the CDL program that, that on completion of the process, they walk away with a one-year certificate. Uh, at the process now, we got uh, five students that would be graduating because we normally, we always start with um, eight students. So we got six completing the CDL program. We lost two along the way, but it's, it was just difficulties trying to get there because um, we have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we have to get their DOT physicals in on time. And it's just, it, it, it just kind of went south with two of our students anyway. So we lost two just due to a little minor things, but 
We do help our program out. We, uh, we assist them along the way. They get plenty of driving, more than 40 hours, anyways, on the driving part. And they get to do hands-on, like uh, cattle hauling and hauling gravel. And if we do do any hay hauling, we, we do let them do that as well, but we only, we only do that once. Anyways, we're still, we're still working with people, we're, with other programs, we're trying to get things uh, like get programs for, or not programs, but uh, trying to find them assignments, so to say. And there's always an assignment for them. So that's the fun part. And it's the same as the heavy equipment. They get on the heavy equipment, they all get their number, their uh, share, number of uh, on equipments anyway, they get their share of hours. And we, we, we take pictures along the way. So, and we uh, collect their hours. Uh, what else can I? Do you want to talk about the recyclable credentials on NCCER? Oh, yeah. On the, on the heavy equipment side, we got the uh, NCCER. Uh, I'm not sure that exactly what, the, what they mean, but <laughs> I have to look at the paper. <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's an apprenticeship program that, uh, this, that we use here. I think we use that for our skills trade too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, it's a, it's a program where you have to test to, uh, online and you get, you get a, uh, what do you call it? You get a certificate through them. And also on completion of our program, you get a one year certificate. But it's, um, everything's done online now, the testing. So that uh, they get plenty of computer time and, and then they get field time too. So it, everything kind of, everything pans out and the students love it. And I think I covered pretty much everything, unless I'm forgetting something. But I'll hand, I'll hand the mic over. <laughs> Thank you, Nathaniel, Christina, yeah. and Tiana. You did a good job. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> uh, let's go to Lisa Gunchos, uh, Title III Director. Lisa? Lisa, I thought I saw you up there. Hilda, just to jump in really quick while we're waiting for Lisa to join. Sure. I do see some questions that people are asking oh, sure. in the chat too. Yeah, um, okay. So I don't know if Nathaniel is still there too, but just if any of your speakers want to answer any questions, go for it. Um, oh, it looks like Tina already answered. Great. I just want to let people know that there are some questions coming up too, which is really great. Sure. <laughs> okay. Elda, all, all yours. Sorry to interject. Oh, that's fine. I didn't even see the questions. Um, so Lisa, we're calling on you, Lisa. Uh, Misty, maybe Misty can start. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm there's ready. Lisa. Yep, Lisa's right here. She's ready. And after okay. Lisa, we'll have our two students. So Lisa, okay, right, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. We hear you. Okay. Lisa, right um, after you, uh, the students can go too. Okay. Um, I'm Lisa Gunshows. I'm with the Title Three program. I've been here like about 15 years. Um, what my program does is we hire TAs and tutors. Uh, tutors share their academic uh, success with the other students and. TAs, they're placed in uh, different departments to help with their daily task. So this year we had, our numbers kind of went down because of the COVID pandemic. And um, um, right, right now I don't have tutors, but I have TAs. I have two at health and wellness and I have one at finance and one at cafeteria. And um, we have students coming in, uh, utilizing the Title III program. There's printers here, uh, computers, uh, they can come and, you know, study and hang around here. I've been kind of helping students when they come in and um, along with the Student Success Center, because they have the mentors, they uh, come in and help tutor too. So uh, Title III and uh, um, Student Success Center, we help students succeed. And um, 
We're really thankful for the Title III program and the Student Success, Student Success Center. You know, we're, we're all in this together, all the student services. We're all here to help any way we can. And whatever ALDA does, we I help like the career fair and uh, new student orientation. And right now we're getting ready for the graduation and that's coming up here pretty soon. So I really love my job, you know, my job is to help and I love to help, not just here at the college, but everywhere I go. So I think that's all I have. Unless you have any questions. Lisa, do you have Autumn there? Yeah, Autumn's right here. I'll have okay. Come. Yes. Uh, this is Autumn Jefferson. She's one of our students that um, volunteered to speak a little bit about her experience at Little Bitcoin College. Okay, Autumn, go ahead. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we okay. can hear. All right. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Autumn Jefferson. Um, can you turn it down a little bit? <laughs> um, my name is Autumn Jefferson. I am a freshman here at Little Bighorn College. I am studying rangeland ecology and management. Um, I've had a lot of support and encouragement ever since my first semester last fall. Everyone's so encouraging and supportive and they have so much resources such as Title III and the Success Center. And um, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to talk about. Oh, and the youth program that Tiana was talking about, I was actually one of the students that got picked. And I'm really thankful because after the summer youth was over, the place that I was at hired me. And I now I have a job and I'm really thankful for the opportunities Little Bighorn College has given me. I am able to continue my education after high school and with the opportunity of unemployment. And I think I don't think I would have wanted to start it anywhere else. Good. That is Don't all I have. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Autumn. We have Trine LaForge with us right now. Of left hand, I'm sorry, Trine left hand. So come on, you can begin. It's okay. Good afternoon. Um, my name's Trine left hand. I've been in school for, this is my second year. And Uh, my major is environmental science and natural resources, and I'm adding biology onto my degree. And after I get my um, associates, I'd want to further my education to my bachelor's. And I'm also a, a tutor at student success. So I help many students that come in. And yeah. I think that's all I have. The American Indian College Fund helped me um, with um, using <laughs> with the school and to buy my books and everything. It's a privilege. I'm also glad that I'm started here at LVHC. It's a very good college, yet. a lot of opportunities and all the instructors and everyone that works here is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chune. You did really well. 
All right, next on our list is um, Jolene Tedmer from the bookstore. She wanted to um, say a few words. So hopefully she's on here. She was really busy today um, with lots of stuff to unpack at the bookstore. So Jolene, are you here? Misty and Erica, are you ready? Misty and Erica, are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah we're ready. All right, let's go then. Okay, here we <laughs> go. go. <laughs> yeah. So my name is Misty McCormick. I'm the admissions clerk. My name is Erica, I'm the admissions assistant. And how <clears throat> things been going here in admissions at Little Big Corn College has been, uh, I guess the most impact that we've had is um, when this COVID hit, how uh, tech savvy we became and having to do everything online. Um, our application is 99.5% <laughs> um, online now, our application. Um, before we uh, used to do both, but um it's pretty much we only um give hard copies to like the elders that are not that are just now getting into um um technology i guess you would say we've been communicating a lot with our students through emails things like that um being able to submit documents to our offices to get their student files complete has been easier. pretty, yeah, it's been easier. We've been getting more of a response because of the demand of like how, um, how we have to have all the information intact electronically. They're able to um, complete their files. So, so like the expectation and the files being complete, the percentage has gone up for us, which is great. And it's probably been the best since we've started here. I've been here for six years. Erica's been here for four, five, five years. Yeah, she started off as a um, student. Um, which city? Mm -hmm. uh, what was it? T with uh, oh, yeah. Title III. Oh yeah, she was with Title Three, And she, always did a wonderful job in here and I loved having her in the office. And so it just kind of became a permanent position and which I'm very thankful for. And so for like admissions, um, we still have like recently, we still have people coming in, turning in documents and things like that. But like I said, it's just been a success for us and we're really happy about it. And um, do you have anything to add? Um, <laughs> do you have any questions? Anybody? Like you just want to ask us? I don't know about the chat. Let's see. Oh, no one said anything. So. But uh, yeah, admissions, um, things have been a lot uh, easier for us, I guess you would say, communicating like this, um, through le being electronically, it's been better. Mm -hmm. Hi, I would like to know if your school um, works with local schools for dual enrollment and if those uh, credits can transfer to uh, schools outside of your area. Yeah, we do. Dual yes, we do. We offered a dual enrollment with um, the Lodgegrass schools 
and the Hardin High School. Um, those are the only two schools that we've been um, dealing, um, that we have dual enrollment with. Um, and yes, they do transfer. If they, once they graduate, they can um, request for their official transcript to be sent to wherever they wanna go, either here or um, if they're going into the university system in the state of Montana or anywhere else. Yeah. Yes, and we just, oh, okay, was Emerson? Sorry, yeah, I was just gonna yeah. jump in. Yeah, I was gonna say we, we are working in a, in a process of creating dual enrollment with Plenty Coup High School as well. And then Two Eagle River. Yes. Cool. Yes, um, that's the other one. And then, and now uh, with we have we do have an agreement or an understanding with MOU with uh, the MUS system with Montana State University systems. So um, a lot of our credits do transfer, and we we we've been we're continuing to build that that uh, transfer uh, um, pathways. Uh, we just had a meeting with them last week. Um, I understand that from Alda, I was supposed to just share a bit about my uh, teacher training program. Is that correct, Alda? Yes, go ahead and say that. Okay, That's all right. One of our highlights too. So all right, I, I, go I, ahead I, and tell them how good it's going for us. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's um, I do apologize. I've been running like a chicken with my head cut off all week. We're advising for the, that program. So I've got a number of students um, uh, scheduled. And so they all stacked up at 11 and 12. And I had to be on some meetings too. And, and so it's just been crazy. But right now we have uh, 44 at various levels in the uh, which is the uh, Crow Teacher Training Program. That's what I'm calling it. We do have... Uh, we were fortunate to be awarded a professional development grant. Our first one, we're in the first year um, in August. Uh, but prior to that, we, we started the degree completion program with an, with, a, um, with an agreement and partnership between University of Montana Western and um, Little Bighorn College along with, with prior public schools, um, Hardin Public Schools, Lodgegrass Public Schools. And uh, what we did then was we're recruiting out of those three. Uh, we've added Wyola as well. And um, also the, um, the St. LeBray schools, uh, St. Charles and Free Eagle have also, uh, which are private, but they are, but they are participating. So we are working with um, paras that are in the, um, that are in the school system. Uh, and so we started off with private money uh, and, um, and we were able, we were fortunate to be able to, to be able to hit the ground running and get people started. So under the Akbawajimikjavia last year, last spring, we graduated 11, all 100% placement on all of them. And so uh, they got scooped up. In fact, they're fighting over uh, looking for the, um, for teachers. And so, uh, and so we have another, um, uh, nine that will be graduating um, uh, this spring through uh, uh, in uh, actually uh, next week. And so we have an additional nine that will be graduating from, from the program. And so uh, of the 44, so actually with the 11, we, had, we have 55 uh, that's, uh, that are, have completed uh, and have turned out for our statistics purposes, Patricia, <laughs> Uh, 55 uh, with 11 graduates with a bachelor's degree, uh, nine more coming through this spring. And then uh, of that, then with the, the 44, and we are still recruiting. And uh, just, uh, and so that's all with the K-8, um, K-8 uh, teacher, um, teacher prep program. We do have an early childhood program. I have seven, uh, part of that is that uh, part of the, um, Problem is, uh, I shouldn't say problem, but challenge would be the would be the best word. Is that uh, we don't have right now uh, a Head Start program. We do have um, we do have um, we do have the um, er, uh, 
birth to, I guess, eighth grade, uh, uh, yeah, I guess, actually elementary level um, um, programs that uh, for children, but, uh, but basically it's, uh, we don't have a formal uh, pre-K program right now, except for what, what the schools are doing. We have two immersion classrooms. Uh, there's two immersion classrooms, pro-immersion in Lodge Grass and at, um, at uh, yeah, uh, Pretty Eagle. And then two immersion pre-K programs that um, Crow School is, has. So uh, those are our pre-K programs out of a need of 400 children. So we're only just scratching the surface of the need. And so, uh, but, but we are uh, looking at um, looking, uh, we are working in consortium with the other folks. We just didn't have the Head Start program for degree completion, but University of Montana Western has been, and, and the crew has been good about accepting those students that want to complete their degree through the P3. And so we, had, uh, we have a couple uh, right now that are in that program that are former graduates of Little Bighorn College in early childhood. So um, uh, we're, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's going well in spite of what's, what's happening. And uh, there's some excitement about, it's a strenuous program, let me just put it that way. Uh, it's a strenuous program because it's a clinical model where they're in the classroom and then we provide program, uh, we provide classes uh, in the evenings. And, and so it's, it's uh, but uh, it's, it's far richer because when they're done, they already have some experience under their belt and they're able to, to um, apply, apply, their, um, apply their knowledge and they gain far more, uh, not from just being in the, classroom, but that application process is, is phenomenal. And we, we've talked with, with the students and they know it's rigorous and they, and we, and we work with them all the way through. We, and, and so, like I said, we're, in, we're learning as we're going, we're adjusting <laughs> and making, making midstream changes, trying to be responsive to our, our students. It is a culturally responsive program as well. Okay, I've taken enough time. I could talk all day. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Sharon. That's what we wanted to hear with all that. Yeah. I like so, that program. Yeah. Why don't we lead into that and let Emerson talk about the um, Pro Language Consortium and yes. they're trying to work on with all yes. of that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is Dr. Uh, Emerson Bolchi. So he just now got back. So oh, go ahead, Emerson. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> <laughs> we had a, uh, I was sitting in on one of my faculty's uh, final, we had our Crow Language one class uh, doing their presentations. So he wanted me to, to be a panelist on his, in his class for the final. So then I had to go rush and get food and come back and here, are you, here we are, but been working on our language consortium stuff. Um, it's, we've, we have received quite a bit of funding through grants, um, the a and grant, and I know we're working closely with Crow Schools, um, and they received an a and grant. So we're combining our, uh, so right now we have our, um, our big thing right now is the, the release of the Crow Dictionary. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's gonna be a pretty dictionary that's coming out on, uh, we're going to have the release on June 3rd, a big celebration, um, pretty exciting. Um, and then in that process, we've, they've developed multiple children's books that, that uh, are from some of our oral traditional stories. So we've been, Vance and myself and Tim McCleary have been translating those books, which is uh, pretty difficult at times, but, but we're pushing through. We got three pages left on the last one that we'll meet on tomorrow to finish that, that list. And then what they're doing with those is they're actually putting them on YouTube with pro speakers speaking the language of at the story in, in, uh, in, on YouTube. So you can go find those on YouTube. And then with the A&A grants that I was talking about, we're, in a, we're at the beginning stages of developing an online language learning app. 
uh, similar to what the Lakota one has, but um, but we're in a in that process now, and hopefully within the next two years we'll have it completed, and the um, and the the uh, the online language learning app we'll be working with the, the with the Crow language teachers um, in at both Crow schools, Lodge Grass, Hardin to uh, to have them to be able to use that in their classrooms as they're uh, teaching Crow. And then we'll be able to use it here. And then anybody else who wants to learn Crow can can get on that language learning app and learn how to speak Crow and get conversational Crow. Um, anything else that would that you have questions on or any other anything else that you want me to comment on? Um, all the um, any of the highlights, like through any of the degree programs? I know we're, our graduation is coming up, so. Yeah, so I, I think we're up at 20, 27 or 28 uh, on the list currently that, that's scheduled to graduate next week. Um, this is finals week. Today is the last day of, of finals week. And um, so it's been pretty busy. Um, Getting, we're all getting pulled in all directions trying to finish out the semester, but it's exciting to uh, to be able to to graduate another another class. Um, last year was my first one. This is my second one. I'm getting a little bit more seasoned, so um, but it's exciting, and I, I look forward to that uh, graduations next Friday. And I don't, I Bill, what was the last one I email? But we're at. Um, we have 30 um, graduates um, in the Associates of Arts and Associate of Science, and we have five uh, that are receiving a one-year certificate in a highway construction. Good, good. So we, we're, out, we're trying to, with the success of, the, of Sharon's 2 plus 2 program, uh, we <coughs> started a different 2 plus 2 program now with, um, with uh, MS, M, is it MSU Northern? And then, and then we're working with with all other places. Uh, Grand Canyon University. They're, I think we're supposed to meet with them soon here at the college. But I went and visited them with with, with them in Phoenix a couple of weeks ago, and they have a whole. They have all these multiple bachelor's programs that that are uh, that our students can jump on, and they're all online with uh, Grand Canyon University. But we also wanted to do four-year programs here at the college. Um, the first one we're looking at doing with, with you know, Tim McCleary my, and myself being here and hopefully in the future, um, Dr. Marty Lopez, he'll be Dr. Marty Lopez next, I think in a couple of weeks, but uh, <clears throat> you know, we, would, we would like to develop a Crow anthropology course here, a four-year program. So there's there's quite a bit going on. Uh, you you didn't mention the Yellowstone Christian College. Oh yeah, the business program that we just there's, there's a bachelor's program with Yellowstone Christian College that we we got into an agreement with them last year. We're kind of the first thing that I ended up sitting in on 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 a lot of meetings with them, and they're in full swing. I think uh, they're they're finishing up their semester pretty. Quick. Um, but there, there's currently seven students in that program. Yeah. And they come to campus and hold classes on campus. So the students locally don't have to travel very far, which is very good for us. Um, so this is kind of a opportunity that we, we can keep continuing with the partnership with these different uh, four, -year, four year colleges, so. All right, thank you, Emerson and Patricia. Uh, <clears throat> we got about three minutes left, I think, uh, for our time. So I just wanted to uh, thank everybody. And also we've been just active in everything we do. We just now, we did like a veterans, <clears throat> uh, honoring veterans in the fall. And then we had like a um, Toys for Tots Christmas. So. Little Bitcoin College distributed to all the schools uh, gifts for all the children. 
um, from preschool to oh, I think eighth grade in our smaller elementary schools. And then right now we're working, looking forward to our graduation and then we'll have our powwow too. So we're aiming for that. Um, and I know it's gonna be a success because everybody's been at a challenge and not going anywhere. So with our powwow, we'll, we'll have a good time and it'll have a good turnout. And then we're getting ready for our summer session too. So uh, any other questions that, uh, Amy, do you have any? Yeah, There's yeah. a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, I just, just think there question. is some questions in the chat. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go for it, Emerson. Oh, yeah. So it says, is the <laughs> summer schedule ready? It, uh, it is ready. And I think it's up on our uh, cloud RAM. So uh, whoever whoever wants to go to summer school can, can apply now. It's on our website, too. Yeah, lbhc.edu. There's another question too from Isabella. What is the best way for colleges to connect with you and your students? How do you, students like to interact with university representatives? Um, that's kind of a tough one to answer right off the bat because we've been on lockdown with COVID for how many years now? <laughs> so it, I think we're getting um, very, we're trying to get students gathered up and the campus is reopening um, but we do have like the career fair, which we were looking forward to last week, but was it two weeks ago? And then we had this yeah, two weeks ago and just like that night before and no again. Uh, yeah. So, um, that was the plan. We have other little grants through American Community College Fund to, um, help students transfer. I, um, am on the schedule to teach a transferring to a four-year university, which I think more students should take advantage of, but I barely get any um, in there. It's just a one credit to, um, I think we would make that very fun with them. Um, but I think we need to make those connections a little more and we need to do more outreach. Um, so hopefully we can get to that when we officially open campus. We've been on lockdown. That's why we've been through hybrid classes. But I think officially we're going to open um, in a couple of weeks for just how we were pre-COVID. So um, with some other precautions, but that's where we want to continue making those connections and get people out. So when they're done here, they can go to another university and be very successful in their education. Yeah, so I, I know I've seen some of these other questions here with um, Terry Scott and, um, and Isabella. We do get like MSU or U of M will, will come and, and uh, visit with students while they're uh, at times. I know it's been a little bit difficult uh, with with the COVID restrictions and everything, but with the, with the college opening up, I think, I think and with hopefully we'll reschedule another career fair soon yeah. with lawyers, with our yeah. students that we'll be able to, to be able to uh, get that accomplished with, with employers and with colleges. So. Right, and so one of the other things um, going on with the employers to connect with your students, we do have, um, you know, every reservation has the BIA and all of those. We have Western Native Voice, every, um, if, you know, that you find them on pretty much every tribal reservation in Montana, but they come to college and want to do like a day fair, like have them bring their resumes, we have a room for, a, for interviews. So we've been letting different entities come in and hold those one day career fairs as they are known to be. And so that is one way we're trying to get um, our people out or bringing other people in to connect them together. And um, I think it was very successful. Western Native Voice came in. I know they went to Lane Deer a day before or a day after maybe to Chief Bellknife. Um, we had the BIA Office of um, Justice Services, the police officers and whatnot. They've come in to recruit because they really need police officers now, different dispatchers and things like that within all of the reservations actually. 
Um, we've had Westmoreland come in, which is the coal mine that works here. They've recruited, they need to fill some positions there. So it's just like an ongoing evolving opportunities are here. We just need people to take advantage of them. So. I would like to add um, to where when Westmoreland came in, um, they had hired three to four of our students that completed the highway construction program. Yeah, so we have a very good, we're trying to be very active in um, getting our graduates either onto a four year or a job placement and we've been very successful with that. Um, so I can't complain and after they leave here, they, they're good, they're set up to be successful in whatever they decide to do next with their life. Thank you, Patricia. So, uh, Amy, did you want to close? Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, we went just... over a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Hey, I, this is tough to fit all this in a 45, 50 minute session, and you did amazing. Elda, as always, you brought together so many of your team members. I've had some questions of people wanting to know the contacts. Um, so, if you did present today, if you would be willing to just put your name and email and phone number in the chat, um, just so all everybody can see that, we're going to be sharing the chat afterwards, so you will get those contacts. Um, okay. I don't. I just want to thank you, Elda, and your whole team. You all did amazing, Patricia. Oh, Emerson, thank you, everybody. It yeah. was really felt like a day in the life. I felt like I was on campus. You all are very busy, um, but it was <laughs> fun to meet your students and bounce around and get to see your campus in this for 50 minutes. So thank you all. <laughs> if you are comfortable unmuting yourself, I like to close and uh, start and close with a big round of applause because it takes a lot of work to make this happen. Thank you, Little Bighorn College team. Hello, good job.